Let me kill this baby. This baby is in my way. This person is in my way. This person is keeping me back from getting the things I want to need. I want to, the things I think I need, the things I want to have. You understand? Amen? And so it just says, ah, if I could just eliminate this person, then I could have A, B, C, these things. So God is saying, wait a minute. When people go to that place. Let there be one last thought to restrain them. And that's this law that God has built into nature. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. Let me close with a story. Have a good look at this image before you leave. You're seated in a place where it's difficult for you to see it. Please just file up here when we're done and have a look, even if it's just for a couple of seconds. I implore you to do that. There was a young girl about 18 years old, and she didn't have much money. Uh, she was struggling in life. She was struggling to buy food. She was struggling in many ways. And she fell into prostitution, and she sold herself to a man who wasn't her husband for a price. Now, this girl had a little sister. She was 12 years old. And over the next few years, the little sister watched her older sister, as she was a prostitute, go from a, a position of poverty into a position of what looked like wealth. All of a sudden, now her older sister has got nice dresses, right? Beautiful dresses, beautiful jewelry, the best makeup, the latest hairstyle, the most expensive braid and weave, okay? Beautiful, beautiful, lovely looking woman for the next few years. And the little sister herself began to be tempted. She began to be tempted. She said, why should I be sitting here? I'm picking through beans and maize, and I have nothing. And look at my sister. She's gorgeous. Let me do, she said, what my sister has done. And the little sister, when she turned 16, finally said, let me do like my sister. She went out. She sold herself to a man like her older sister. But if she could have seen down the road about 10 or 20 years later, 30 years later, what her sister looked like, if only, if only she could have seen, if only she could have seen, because 10 years later, when her sister was 28 years old, she met a man and they disagreed over her price. And that man said, you pay, I'll pay you this much. She said, no, you pay me this much. And she talked back to him. She angered him. You know what he did? He did like that. <coughs> Out went her tooth. Now, there's a hole where there was a beautiful white tooth, right? <laughs> but she's still beautiful, right? 28 years old. 10 years later, however, 38 years old, something similar happened. A man pushed her in a similar world between two men, and she got pushed. And the nose <coughs> got broken. So now, so now this beautiful nose that was set so sweetly in the middle of her beautiful face is now over here. <laughs> One third as big as it was before. And it kind of goes like, eh, 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 right? So now, she's still a prostitute, but she's half price. This little sister could have seen a few years down the road. You see, the older you get, these years pass. Ten years just goes by like that as you grow up. And all of a sudden, what you call the future is there. If her sister could have seen her older sister. See, for a moment, it looked really good, didn't it? It looked really good. See, Neil? It looked good. For a moment. Okay, when you look at the USA, when you look at the United Kingdom, when you look at Europe right now, you watch. You pay attention and see what happens next. Do you hear me? Watch. When people rebel against the law of God, the law of the God who created nature, when they target his innocent children, there is a penalty. Sooner or later, it catches up. And it may look fun for a little while. Ooh, there's a prostitute in the book of Proverbs. She said, stolen bread is sweet. Right? Stolen bread is sweet. You see, America, let me close.
close with this. America, Europe, and UK, they want to push divorce on your country. They want to see, like it is in America, two out of three marriages ending in divorce. They want to promote adultery. They want to promote prostitution. And they want to promote homosexuality. There are people today coming to Nakuru. I'm not sure about this day today, but they're planning. They come every year to Nakuru with lots of money in their pocket. They're homosexuals. They want to abuse you. They want to see homosexuality legalized in Kenya. Terrible, abominable things. They will use their money. They'll even offer to pay school fees sometimes if someone will let them destroy their body, destroy their soul, do these evil and abominable acts. Be wise. Okay? Amen. Be wise. You can't say now, if, you're, if you can hear my voice now, none of you can say, any more than I can say, that you haven't been born. Okay? Amen? You've seen. You've seen the child of the womb the person made in the image of God. And I'll repeat it one more time. God, God himself. Just a few weeks ago, we celebrated Christmas, right? coming of God into the world, the coming of the Messiah. Even though no human eye could see him in the womb of Mary, even John the Baptist knew he was there. When John the Baptist, he himself, in uh, the beginning of the book of Matthew, was in his mother's womb and he leapt up. That's what Elizabeth said, that child in my womb, she said, when I met you, O mother of my Lord, he leapt, he jumped up. You see, here we have an unborn baby, amen, a pre-born baby in the womb of a woman, full of the Holy Spirit, worshiping God, who was about this size of this baby who was murdered, also in the womb of his woman, in the womb of his mother, excuse me. So you remember that. When you know someone who is being tempted to do this to an innocent baby, you speak up. The book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 8 says, Open your mouth for those who cannot speak for themselves, who are appointed to be destroyed. Open your mouth. Don't keep silent. When that place, there's a place in your spirit, sometimes when God is pushing through, trying to tell you, say something, say something, say something, you have a decision to make at that point. You're either going to open your mouth, risk embarrassment, risk feeling kind of funny, risk feeling uh, maybe being rejected by a friend. But if you say you fear God, do you hear me? Do you fear God? Yes. Do you fear God? Yes. If you say you fear God, that means you care more about what God is telling you to do or telling you to say than you do about what human beings will think. Open your mouth for those who cannot speak for themselves. Thank you for your time. God bless you.